Greetings, pet lovers. Bridget here with First Street Pets, and today we're going to talk about the best collars to use for dog walking. I'll start by saying that there is no magic tool that will make your dog stop pulling or make them easier to walk. All of these tools that we'll talk about today have pros and cons, and when used properly can definitely be of help. But there is no substitute for training and for time spent with your dog. If you only walk your dog from time to time or once a week, you're probably not going to make a lot of progress. If you don't spend a lot of time with your dog, if they're out in the backyard all the time, again, it's going to be difficult. If you walk your dog every day, spend time with them and get some help with the training, it's going to make a huge difference whichever collar you use. Let's start with the choke chain. So as its name would suggest, it is a chain that can choke. This is an old school standard in all the old dog training classes. This was always required, even the old Barbara Woodhouse videos, you would see her using these, although she would do some variations so they wouldn't actually choke the dog. This is a tool that can be useful, but as the name would suggest, it can actually choke the dog. So some pros about the choke chain is that when fitted properly, and there are some tricks to fitting it properly, it only goes on one way, the dog cannot slip out of it. If it's fitted improperly, if it's too big, the dog can still slip out of it. And they can literally choke. If they are pulling the whole time, if you are yanking on it, it can injure their throat. So there are definitely some cons to this type of tool. Back in the old days, I called it the jerk and yank school of dog training. And that, that's exactly what we were taught to do, was to jerk on the chain to stop them from pulling. So this is why I don't generally recommend this. Although it can be a useful tool used properly, it wouldn't be my number one recommendation. A slip lead or a slip lead collar is basically the same as the choke chain. It is something that can tighten and literally choke the dog, but it's usually made out of cloth or some other type of material that isn't a chain. Now these can be useful as a walking tool if your dog doesn't pull too much. As with the choke chain fitted properly, the dog cannot slip out of them. But on the downside, a dog can definitely get some damage to their throat from the pulling and the squeezing around the throat of this type of tool. So while I have used them for dogs that were already well trained, it was just something easy to keep clipped to the end of the leash. It also wouldn't be my number one recommendation, but can be useful in some situations. The pinch collar. Now say this word or produce one of these devices in a group of dog people and you'll get a variety of strong opinions, some for and some against. Now as a professional pet sitter, we do use whatever collars that the clients provide as long as they are safe. And there are situations where we will use a different type of collar, of course, with the client's permission. But some people do use pinch collars and they can be useful in some situations. Now, there are different kinds of pinch collars. Some are just the straight up metal prongs that will dig into the dog's neck. Some come with little rubber stoppers to put over the prongs so they kind of do less damage. Some are simply fitted by hooking the prong links together while others have a quick release so you can set it to the right size and then just do a quick release. Now on the pro side, fitted properly, as with the choker and the slip lead, a dog can't get out of it. So a dog can't slip out of the collar and run away while you're out walking. If they are improperly fitted, if they're too big, they can slip out of it. If they are fitted too tightly, of course they're going to be uncomfortable the whole time you're walking and they can actually come unhooked. This actually happened to me recently while I was walking a client's dog with an older sort of worn out pinch collar. Dog doesn't really pull, so it's not really necessary, but I use it because that's what the client provides. 
we were walking down the main street and the collar just dropped down onto the ground. So thank God the dog just kept on walking with me as if nothing happened. And I was able to clip the lead to his buckle collar to finish the walk. So these are definitely some downsides of that collar. Now also on the con side, if the dog is at all aggressive towards people or other dogs, this device can make them a lot more aggressive. Dogs don't understand what is happening to them. If they see another dog and they start reacting and you pull or yank on this collar and they feel pain, it's just going to make them more angry at the other dog or at a person if they have any kind of aggression or shyness towards people. So this is a tool that can definitely go wrong in a lot of situations. Although I have seen people use this to walk dogs that are friendly, but just very large and unruly, like a hundred pound pit bull, a hundred pound Labrador that they otherwise wouldn't walk if they didn't have a tool like that. So again, not my number one choice, not something I use on my own dogs at home, but something that can be useful for some people, but with a few caveats. The Martingale is my personal favorite. It's a great all around collar for walking just about any type of dog with the only exception of dogs that have a really tiny sensitive neck like a five pound chihuahua or yorkie or dogs that kind of don't have a neck like a bulldog or a pug where actually keeping a collar on their neck can be difficult and they're more suitable for a harness so there's two different kinds there's a continuous kind and one with a buckle for easy release i do not recommend the buckle kind because the buckle can break. Martingale collars are inexpensive. In fact, I will post a link in the description where you can order them online. They can be purchased in many different sizes. In fact, we keep just sort of an arsenal of different size Martingale collars. If we go to a client's house and they have forgotten to leave the walking collar and leash, maybe it's in their car and they took it to work, or if what they have isn't safe. This is a good, safe, all-around collar to use. Again, I recommend the continuous kind because fitted properly, they cannot break. They will not break no matter how hard the dog pulls. Now your leash may break. We'll do another video on leashes. But if you have a dog that pulls, this is gonna help you because it won't break. It won't slip off over their head. Now some cons are that it can slip if it's not properly fitted. So the good thing about the martingale is that it does tighten, but not infinitely, like a choke collar or a slip lead. You set it to only tighten a certain amount. So it won't slip up over the dog's head, but it's not gonna continue tightening until it chokes them completely. So you need to have these collars correctly fitted. If they're too loose, they can slip out of it. If they're too tight, it's gonna be uncomfortable. You want your walk to be enjoyable for your dog. And you want that collar to be comfortable when they're walking by your side and not pulling. Just be aware that it varies from dog to dog. As I said, with some little dogs, a harness may be more appropriate. And we will do a separate video on best harnesses for walking. Some dogs, if they have a really big head and a small neck, different types of breeds may be shaped this way or mixed breeds. You may have to slip the collar on and then tighten it again once it's on them and then untighten it and take it off after your walk. Whereas with your average dog, you can just slip it on and off. You don't have to adjust it, but one time. The head collar came out in the 90s and was very popular at the time and still is today. There's two main companies that I know of that make these products, which are Gentle Leader and Halty. There's probably other companies, but those are the two original companies that made this type of collar. Now, as a horse person, I'm familiar with head collars. That's how you lead horses around. So I kind of got the concept of trying something different other than just always a neck collar or a harness. Now, back in the 90s, I did actually take a training class with Gentle Leader and was a certified Gentle Leader instructor. That was a long time ago. I don't remember all of it. But as I recall, some of the training methods did require some finesse. You didn't just want to plop it on the dog and go for your walk as you would normally. Some of the ways to keep the dog from pulling involved either turning the head to the side or lifting it up. And this is while the dog is walking at your side. You wouldn't want them to run out to the end of the leash and suddenly hit it and have their head whip around as that could obviously injure their neck. 
So some pros are that fitted and used properly, it can control a dog that pulls and it can keep them from getting out of it. But again, it does take some finesse to use this type of collar. It's not just like putting on a regular collar around their neck and going for your walk as usual. You do need to know how to fit and how to use this tool a certain way. Now on the con side, I have seen dogs get these off their nose in seconds. Once they figure out if they can whack it with their paw, away it goes. And I was working with a huge pit bull at a shelter years ago, about an 80 pound pit bull. And this dog, I tried the gentle leader and he got it off in seconds. So we ended up using a type of a harness on him, which we'll talk about in the harness video that finally worked because he was so huge, no one could take him for a walk and he was getting stressed in his kennel. So we used a type of harness on him. He eventually did get adopted thanks to our efforts at getting him out of his kennel and getting him seen by people. But again, I have seen dogs figure out how to just snap that head color right off. And a lot of dogs don't like it. Even if they're used to it, I see them fighting and fighting the whole time, shaking their head, trying to get it off. So while it can be a good tool in some situations or perhaps for training, it's definitely not for every dog. One of the pluses that I have seen, if you have a dog that is very reactive to other dogs and kind of picks fights with other dogs or stares at them or gets really agitated when you're out walking, is the ability to turn the head away not only keeps them from staring at the other dog and reacting, it keeps the other dog from reacting because staring is just as rude for dogs as it is for people. And when your dog is staring and locking eyes and squaring up with another dog, that dog is going to feel threatened and they're going to start reacting. And then you get this kind of chain reaction. So it can be helpful in those types of situations. But if you're going to use this tool, it might be best to work with a trainer and figure out how to use it to your best advantage. The buckle or snap collar is a standard collar that's used by pretty much everyone who has a dog. The purpose of this collar is really for identification. I do not recommend that you walk your dog with this type of a collar for several reasons. One is that especially the snap type, those snaps, no matter how tough they are, can break pretty easily. Buckle collars usually don't break, but both of these kinds of collars, once dogs figure out how to slip out of them, they can and they will, especially if they're tricky and there's something they want to do. If they're a stubborn type of a dog, like a terrier or a dachshund or something like that, they see a squirrel they want to chase, they see some garbage laying on the ground that they want to eat, they're going to figure out how to slip out of that collar pretty quickly. So there are many, many cases that I've seen in my work with the nonprofit Mission Reunite where dogs have gotten away from their owners or from others walking them by slipping out of this type of a collar. And it's a double whammy because not only do they now not have a collar on and they're loose, that collar has their ID tags on it. So they now have no identification. So this is why I do not recommend using that collar for walking. Now you may say, well, my dog is super mellow, never pulls, or he's 14 years old. This is just what I do. If you want to do that, fine. Pick up a cheap buckle collar at the dollar store, fit it to your dog, clip it to your leash, and use that for walking as a second collar. So if anything ever does happen, he still has on his collar with the ID tags on it. I can't tell you how important that is in getting your dog back home quickly should they get loose. Everyone thinks it won't happen to them, but that's why we call them accidents. Nobody plans for these things to happen. So in conclusion, as I said in the beginning of the video, there is no substitute for spending time with your dog, for walking him regularly, for seeking the assistance of a trainer. If private training isn't in your budget, then sign up for one of those group classes. Many humane societies have them, rec centers. If you're going to work with a professional trainer one-on-one, -on -one, definitely do look into their methods and see if they are using contemporary methods that are positive based and what their reviews are, if they are recommended, if you're going to hire someone as a private trainer to come to your home and work with your dog. Something very important to mention about any of these walking collars, with the exception of the buckle and snap collar, none of these collars are to be left on the dog. These collars are only for walking. Anything that tightens, snugs up, 
can catch on something and strangle the dog. Sadly, I have heard of many cases of this happening with dogs hanging themselves, choking themselves on these types of collars. So the only thing that should be on them when you're not walking is the buckle or snap collar with the ID on it. And even that should be fitted in such a way that it stays on. But if they got hung up on something, say on a fence, that if they really struggled, it would come off and the dog would not hang. I hope this has been helpful for you. I would love to hear about what types of collars you recommend for walking, what has worked for you or what has not worked. What are some experiences you've had with these types of collars? Is there anything new on the market that I should check out and review? I would love to hear it. I love hearing about all the innovations in products for pets. Thank you for watching today. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We upload content on pet care, lost pet recovery, and pet business every week.